Peace family. Hope everybody's well. My Wazir. I just um coming off a run. Trying to get back at it. Too many people keep coming up to me talking about some, hey man, you eating good. <laughs> a couple of months ago they were coming up to me saying, hey man, you you lose the weight. Now they're coming up to me saying, you, you eating good, aren't you? I've uh, slacked off on my running, you know. So I just restarted my whole running program. Not from scratch, but basically from a point that um, I can kind of build back up to where I was. So anyway, um, man, I just, I'm feeling good. And I, I just wanted to, uh, to share a thought about being humble. You know, conflict is a part of life. And the, one of the greatest conflicts, if not the greatest conflict, is the battle inside. The battle of our own will to move in a direction that's most productive for us, that's best for us, that we make the right choices for our health. Like every day, we're in a battle, you know, of where our will is going to go. Napoleon Hill has a book. Everybody knows him for Think and Grow Rich, but he wrote a book the following year called Outwitting the Devil. And that book wasn't released until a few years ago. His wife didn't want him to release this book because she was afraid of the blowback they would get because in the book, He's very critical of the church. He's very critical of the education system. And it's a very controversial book, starting to rain. Um, but anyway, in that book, and it's, 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 it's crazy because the book is a conversation between him and the devil. So he, <laughs> he or his idea of the devil and he gets the devil and he's almost like the devil has to answer all of his questions and so he's asking the devil how do you run the world and the devil tells him I run the world by getting men to do something called drifting now drifting it's basically procrastinating. It's just floating through life. Oh, excuse me, I gotta wipe this water off my glasses. You know, I don't have enough views to be worried about that yet, right? People picking apart everything, so I should be all right. But anyway, um, it's a process called drifting, which is basically procrastination, just going on autopilot, not being in control of your will. And the devil tells Napoleon Hill, 98% of men and women I control through this process called drifting. The, my biggest enemies are those who have control of their will and are not just going through life drifting, procrastinating, just on autopilot, just surviving. You know, it's so easy especially with technology now, right, man, we got everything at, at the tip of our finger to just live aimlessly every day, right? Just mindless entertainment at, at our fingers. You know, we got everything here. No, no more record stores and you don't have to go to the movies if you don't want to. You could pull your phone out, watch a video and just be on autopilot. But we all have a gift and a talent that if we made use of would greatly improve the quality of not only our lives but the lives of others who could benefit from that gift but that takes willpower that takes deliberate action and that's so difficult because you know to be in charge of my mind all the time I gotta be on all the time. I remember I interviewed this guy years ago and he said entertainment is just basically a diversion. 
you know, entertainment is, you know, don't get me wrong, it has its place, but to absorb an inordinate amount of entertainment. We're watching somebody else's creation who took the time and have control of their mind and made a deliberate effort to produce something that the world would consume. While neglecting what's in us that the world can consume that would give us joy you know that takes some effort like exercising like anything else right so we all have gifts we all have talents but giving up just a mindless drifting through life giving up blaming somebody else for our shortcomings all of us none of us get through life without you know being done wrong at times being mistreated but I always give this illustration if I took you I'm in a parking lot <laughs> and I took you and I threw you down in this parking lot where the cars are coming in at. I pushed you down right there. Just out for no reason. That's wrong of me. I would be wrong. And if you lay there <laughs> and you have the ability to get up or you have the ability to call for help if you can't get up and you don't, all you do is sit there and you pointing at me well, I did me so wrong. Then you're wrong for that. I read this book called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a... I'm not going to say the word. <laughs> and he talks about indignation in it. It's almost like an indignation is kind of like that feeling of somebody did me wrong. And it's almost like a badge of honor sometimes with some of us that because somebody did us wrong it makes us feel special and so we walk around with this indignant attitude they did me wrong <laughs> don't get me wrong to quote the holy quran it says that Allah loves not the utterance of hurtful public speech except in the case of one who's been wronged so if we've been wronged, God gives us a, you know, the freedom to express ourselves. But ultimately, we have to take action and take responsibility for our own lives. And to be honest, y'all, the education system is not designed to produce thinkers. It's designed to produce people who take orders people who come in and will work a job for 20, 30 years and be comfortable. They don't teach us to think critically. They don't teach us to produce. They teach us to be consumers. And television and internet, it's all about consumption. It's not about production. So that's a skill that most of us have never learned to be a producer. And so environment has such a, a heavy influence on us. So if we're programmed by society to be consumers, if we're programmed by society to just take orders, which is nothing wrong with that, you know, because order is what governs society. Everything has order. It'd be chaos, you know. But to never be taught to be a producer, to never be taught how to cultivate that which is in us, to be completely in survival mode and trying to hold on to, you know, a job or something that we don't even love for real. 
but to to fight and claw and 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 cut people throats out of survival mode you know to hold on to something that that we it's not even ours man it's it's, a, it's an amazing thing to watch you know but all of us have a talent and a gift that needs to be cultivated but we were never taught to think but okay do I sit here and say that for the next 20 years oh man I was never taught to think by society or do I take that knowledge and that responsibility and make adjustments in my life to where I can determine you know my own destiny or do I just drift and float from one thing to another? Because one thing about it, y'all gotta understand this, right? <laughs> We're in a capitalist society, okay? So, and you are a commodity and I'm a commodity in this capitalist society, right? So, if we allow somebody else to assign value to us, they're never going to assign you the value that you're really worth. They're going to assign you the value. They're going to assign value to you to what would benefit them. It's like if you go into a store and they tell you to, let's say I go to Best Buy and they say, man, you get to select whatever price you want to pay for any of these laptops in here. Do you think I'm going to say, okay, yeah, I'm going to pay $1,000 for this MacBook. No. I'm going to say, shit, I'm, I'm going to take it for $30. Hey, hey, I'll give you 30 for it. <laughs> so when we allow other people to assign value to us, we're never going to get what we're worth. You know? Same thing in relationships, but I ain't even going to go down that road today. You got to know your worth, but you were never taught that. So now you know what you're going to do about it because you're responsible for what you know. And I'm responsible for what I know. Y'all have a blessed one. Love y'all. Peace.